It's a film which is still predicting the future. With artificial intelligence being developed at a rapid and uncontrolled rate, surely someone said, didn't you learn anything about Skynet? Yes, we're talking about the Terminator, and this is Sign 5. The Terminator was conceived and created by James Cameron at a time when sci-fi movies were becoming big business for both movie studios and the burgeoning home video market. However, up until its release, the film was actually considered a low-budget B-grade production. Not only was Cameron a virtual unknown in the movie industry, but Arnold Schwarzenegger was only known for his Conan the Barbarian films and being an ex-bodybuilder. Plus, to make matters worse, the film was being compared to another B-grade movie called The Ex-Terminator, for which its sequel, Ex-Terminator 2, was also released in 1984. Clearly, the film's success is due not only to the great story concept, as well as the chemistry between Michael Bean and Linda Hamilton, but also the physically threatening presence of Schwarzenegger. Somewhat amusingly, Cameron himself noted the Terminator's design of the film is highly impractical. As an infiltration unit, Schwarzenegger is so big he just stands out in a crowd, yet it clearly works for the film because of the imposing threat he presents. And just for clarification, the Terminator featured in the film is known as the Cyberdyne Systems Model 101, featuring a T-800 endoskeleton. As clarified by James Cameron himself, all 101 models look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, which is what you see in the sequels, whilst the 100 model and a 102 model would look like someone else, yet all of them feature a T-800 endoskeleton. At its very core, the film is a clear warning about the power and influence of technology and our reliance on it. Sadly, more than 40 years since the film's release, our society is now completely dominated by phones, computers and the online infrastructure controlling it, which Western society can never survive without. With this in mind, it's easy to believe that some people will eventually start turning towards the emergence of AI to assist in solving the ongoing problems of human conflict and suffering. When analysing the film's machine takeover further, Sci-fi cinephiles will see some unique parallels from the film's Colossus the Forbin Project released in 1970, iRobot released in 2004, and even Alphaville released in 1965. Regarding the former, it's interesting to note that Colossus and Guardian, the two supercomputers controlling the world's nuclear weapons, determined that to save humanity they must enslave it. For this reason, there is a genuine belief among some philosophers and academics that AI concepts such as Skynet, Colossus, Vicky, Alpha 60, etc., could eventually become real. Somewhat ironically, considering the post apocalyptic future scenes are set in the year 2029, there's still plenty of time for it to become our reality. But putting the doom and gloom aside, another significant point in the film is Sarah's character development. From a humble waitress dealing with boyfriend trouble, she morphs into a woman who unlocks her fighting spirit and instinct for survival. However, as we learn in later installments, this transformation takes a serious toll on her mental stability, which is exacerbated by the traumatic death of Kyle, who appears in Sarah's vision in a scene from Terminator 2, which was deleted from the final film. Yet what makes the film an engrossing piece of entertainment is the line from Kyle Reese stating that the Terminator absolutely will not stop, and we get to see how literal that statement is. In the climax of the film, we see the Terminator being destroyed and are ready to roll the credits, only to discover how indestructible this machine really is. This in turn pushes the audience into crying out in desperation, how are Sarah and Kyle going to get out of this? And this is why the film is so ingenious, because like the Terminator itself, it just doesn't let up from the beginning to the end. It's also interesting to note that the film is a masterclass of intricate nuance and detail. Whether it be Dr. Silberman, bypassing the Terminator as he exits the police station due to his annoying beeper, Kyle Reese being John's father but not knowing it, and of course the great moment where we see Sarah's photo being taken in the Jeep, which ends up being the same photo Kyle fawns over in the future, as he wonders what she was thinking at that moment, not knowing she was thinking of him. Fortunately, the film is still a delight to watch, even if historically it's been completely overshadowed by its big budget sequel released seven years later. Admittedly, if it has one minor flaw, it's the T-800 stop-motion animation being clunky and unconvincing. Yet its fantastic and now iconic design makes that issue easily dismissible. Finally, after all that, no one asked the obvious question. How many Sarah Connors actually lived in Los Angeles in 1984, and did any of them freak out when someone knocked on the door? And on that note, I'll be back for another Sci-Fi Spective.